Hi you guys, this is Irene and um, I wanted to talk to you guys about Chicago and their recent protest to oust their elected official. Um, I saw a news clip and I was prompted to make this video by two things. One was something that a community member said, um, a couple of community members said, another is something that a news anchor said. So. Uh, the two community members I'm referring to, and I will try to find the clip and put a link down below. Um, one of them was a woman, I believe, and she said that, you know, she has a neighbor who has grandkids that she doesn't see because um, I'm assuming she can't go to them, right? I'm, I'm presuming that. And she doesn't want them to visit her in her community because she doesn't want them to go home in a casket. Um, somebody else said a man was burned alive in their community. Um, and another man, it might have been the same one speaking of the man that was burned alive, was saying that everybody doesn't hate Trump there. They really just want to work with the authorities to get them in there to remove the criminals. And if you've watched any of my videos, you know one thing I really try to impress because there is a myth that black people are criminals and violent is that most of us are not violent. It's a small percentage and even in poor communities where there is a lot of violence, most of the people there are just regular hardworking people or poor people being terrorized by crazy people who are able to break the law without consequence most of the time. And so the news anchor um, was, was interviewing a black man like discussing the commentary of the protesters and he goes, well, would they be open to controversial policies like stop and frisk. And the black guy he was interviewing, he didn't know what to say. And I'm like, no, no, they wouldn't be open to stop and frisk. No, the whole community doesn't want to randomly have their rights violated to catch some criminals. You know, this is, this is like the TSA thing that we've all bowed down to. Like, I can't tell you how many times my vagina has been touched and I don't care if it's not open palm. Any part of your hand touching my vagina and we're not, you know, is a problem. Or my breasts have been touched by TSA. No, we don't want a wide policy throughout a city where people are just being stopped and then violated. Like, what is that? You know, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's not like legal. You know, what about unreasonable search? Does that count on your body? The frisking because they're looking for stuff. Um, but the, the, like I said, the black guy didn't have anything to say. And the thing is that people forget stop and frisk is one of the reasons these communities have a bad relationships with the police right now. Policies like that, because once you start dehumanizing and violating the rights of just a group of people indiscriminately, you forget why you're there. If you hear things, it's like, these are my children. Um, so yeah, with that said, there are things that can be done. Um, I really advise working with the community to kind of flush out ways to deal with these criminals. Something that they do in Japan, which I find really fascinating because like I said, if you watch any of my videos that aren't like, um, political or controversy oriented, you know, all like pretty much the rest of my videos are geared towards women cooking and um, children, homeschooling, family, stuff like that. Um, so you'll know that I have a child that lives in Japan. Something they have in Japan are police boxes. So on the corners, like every so many blocks, there are at, there's actually a police officer just there. And so as you're walking down the street, you're passing officers that have an official post. This is something that could work within that community. And I'm going to tell you why it will work because police presence will one, reduce crime. Um, two, it will increase their responsiveness. Okay. So if, if you, a lot of people don't report crime in these communities because you have a bad relationship with the police on one side. And on the other side, if you call the police, they may not come. They may not come for a long time. Um, they may not actually arrest anybody. Um, there's a story that I, I haven't told, but um, I will tell. I have a scar um, 
on my neck. I don't know if you guys can see it, where somebody literally took a giant knife and stabbed me in the neck. And it were it was almost a week before I managed to get that person arrested. And when things like that go on, it it can be a deterrent. Now, granted, I wasn't living in the in the ghetto or the slum when this happened, but it doesn't matter. That my point is like a lack of responsiveness leaves victims open to being threatened, to not feeling comfortable going to the police because they're looking for immediate action. Um, <clears throat> a fund, and this is where government money can really come in handy, a fund to put cameras. I am totally comfortable with public surveillance. Um, like if you're on an open street that's been paid for by the public, well, you should be able to be filmed. And I would be open to that public surveillance so that in high crime areas, when a crime is committed, these people can be arrested. The, I'm for self-policing, <clears throat> neighborhood watch in those communities, um, organizing the people so that they know that as they are pressing the criminals in their community and turning in the criminals in their community, that there's an equal response on the legal side to remove these individuals and um, and rehabilitate their community. So yeah, I would say video surveillance in the streets, police boxes, I'm calling them, I don't know what the official name is, where every so many blocks an officer is literally posted there. Um, this will take a little bit of money, but not a lot of time. Like this isn't rocket science, you know, but those are things that can help. And then within the communities, people have to change their mindset and be willing to turn these people in. It just needs to be a known fact that you're going to go to jail if you commit crime in these communities. And there really needs to be an open and public dialogue so that everybody's on the same page so that people understand and more importantly, those in authority understand that their purpose in the community is not to militarize the community. It's to work with the community to rid the area of crime. And like I said, these methods are used in other countries as just regular methods. For example, when my son moved into his apartment in Japan, they take a registry of everybody. A police officer physically came to where he, not because he's a foreigner, just because this is what they do in Japan, a police officer literally came to his residence and took down the information, like emergency information for him and took information from him. So this is not about militarizing anything. It's about, and mind you, Japan has a very low crime rate, right? It's about creating a presence, right? where people understand and know that there's a partnership going on here, but more importantly, where criminals understand and know this is not a game anymore. You've got to move on. You got to kick rocks. You can't be here, you know? And I think creative new strategies are needed. New strategies, not stop and frisk, not violating people's rights, but new strategies. Um, yeah, you know, you could do things. I, I love that the police, I just thought that was crazy when he told me that, but door to door, the police door knocking, hi, I'm officer so-and-so, I'm in box 32B over on 4th and Market, you know, if you have any issues, you know that we have an officer posted there 24 hours a day. This is the number to that local box or, you know, maybe they can have like city provided cell phones where they just trade off the phone depending on who's on shift. Um, and they're making those rounds and who knows what criminals you'll catch making your rounds. Do you know what I mean? That is a creative strategy. So just to make it more comprehensive, because I know my thoughts are like coming to me as I'm talking to you guys, um, putting in surveillance, which I've. Um, my mom and I worked on doing surveillance on her cul-de-sac, and that is actually not super expensive to put in the surveillance. Um, there are inexpensive ways to do that, and if you can get the property owners to agree, you know, it's it's just a few thousand dollars for every, you know, five or six buildings. Um, and to have that feed go back to the, to, you know, the, the, 
the officers themselves are alive feed that they can follow like digitally because you know how surveillance has come pretty far where you can just see that on your phone um, so that we don't have to outfit these boxes with too much technology. Um, like I said, the officers carrying phones that are specifically for the citizens to be able to reach them. Um, when those boxes are set up every so many blocks, that the officers that are going to be there, not, and now this doesn't take the place of regular patrol. Do you know what I mean? These are just all a constant police presence. Um, that they are going and knocking doors, introducing themselves, handing out their cards ahead of time to every home that's within their, like, you know, two, two to five block radius, like however often they decide to set them up. Um, then organizing the community. You know, the government is quick to mail us some stuff. You know, mail out something with a number residents can call, a website residents can go to to upload their videos of crimes being committed. Um, any information that they have, allow that to be encrypted, completely anonymous. That way it empowers the police with evidence. Do you know what I mean? Um, that they can either use in court or that will help them pinpoint um, the individuals and high crime areas in, in, in the targets, you know, the target communities that they're dealing with. So these are just some ideas that I'm just throwing out right here as a sane person that don't violate people's rights necessarily, allow you to work as a community. One second. Sorry, I bought my daughter a princess dress for her birthday. And I think my other daughter grabbed her dress and she thought she tore it. So with that said, um, real life awaits, but I just wanna say that there are creative strategies that we can use. We can definitely take pages like I, you know, I'm stealing a lot of my ideas from what they do in Japan and modifying them for here in the States um, that don't violate people's rights and treat them inhumanely and that allow people to feel that they are working in a partnership and coalition with law enforcement and not just, you know, being violated by not part of the group that's under scrutiny of law enforcement, you know, and really also help law enforcement view these people in the case of those that don't as human beings who are working with them, you know, so that they are not looking at every potential person as a threat, that they know that they're heavily supported with their in their community. And we really need to build those bridges. You know, I had a commenter on one of my other videos say, you know, all people have to do is stop committing crime if they want the crime in the area to be lower. You don't need, um, what did he say? You don't need more police presence or some ignorant stuff he said. I don't know. But I'm just like, if only it were so easy. We'd have no crime if, if criminals just thought, you know what? I want my community to be better. I'm going to stop committing crime. But you know, they're not going to do that, you know? So we have institutions like prisons and, and jails and police officers and military. We have those things in place to protect people like me I know how to shoot a gun, but I don't have it in me to hurt a person or police anything. I'm five foot two and a woman. If I'm on the street with all my children, I want to be able to call somebody if I need protection. I'm not counting on the criminal to self check and decide, you know what? I'm just gonna be a better person today, you know? So, you know, I hate comments like that. I hate comments like what the news anchor would be open to stop and frisk. Really the only thing you could come up with was just violate everybody's rights who's walking the street so that they can just feel uncomfortable every time they see a cop. They don't know if they're gonna jump out the car and start frisking them, you know? So we have to like, I keep I keep saying this. We have systems and places and, and place and ways of doing things and people keep trying to like maneuver in the box. Dude, there's a whole world out there. Crawl out the box and use your brain and come up with some new ideas. And everything doesn't have to be red taped to high heaven and made overly complicated and need endless like 13 bazillion discussions. Like sometimes it's really simple. Just make the choice and do it. And I know there's going to be all these people. It's not that simple. Trust me. I deal with academics and red tapers all the time. And they've got 99.9% .9 of all the excuses in the world why things are a great idea, but you know, this and that, and no, things are only as difficult as you make them, honestly. Sometimes it's as simple as moving forward and taking action. 
I guarantee you if somebody declares martial law today, it's not going to take them that long to organize the military and get them in the streets. So it's not going to take that long to retrofit a neighborhood, put extra police presence there, put some money and backing behind that, and even use some of the ideas that I've presented today that I think are really good ideas. Really good ideas on multiple levels. Like I said, not just to relieve crime, but also to build a community where the police and the individuals in the community are working as a community. So with that said, I hear knocks at my door, so I'm gonna go. I'll talk to you guys later.